everyone has a great class. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. And thank you, Felicia, for that great introduction. Um, if you aren't familiar, my name is Bethany, and I work for Singer Sewing Company as an educator. And I have, as she mentioned, a couple of colleagues in the chat today for our live class, um, Sonny and Amy. So if you have questions, you might see them answer your questions. They work with me. Um, and if it's something that I need to repeat or show on camera, they'll pop in and let me know. Um, just a quick reference, we are going to do um, I'm going to our class is about three quick ornament projects. Um, you will receive all three tutorials to be able to make these on your own. Um, but the one that I am going to make during the live today is actually this one right here, which is a cathedral window ornament. It's super cute. I chose to do this one in the live um, because it is a little more in involved. And so I thought it would be more beneficial to see this one made in the live. Um, but we didn't have time to do all three in the live, but they are very quick. So I just wanted to show them to you up close. Um, so let me move these out of the way for a second. So this one right here is just a little Christmas tree ornament. This is actually a really good project to like incorporate your kids, get them involved, uh, super quick and easy. And it's a fun way to uh, experiment with different um, stitches on your machine to decorate the Christmas tree. So this one's like a little satin stitch that I just ran back and forth like garland on the tree. This was a little scallop stitch on the machine that I was using. Um, this one is makes it kind of look like um, this one kind of reminds me of the stitches on a baseball. I keep putting this in the wrong place. There we go. Um, so you can see those fun stitches. And then if you want, you can just leave it plain with the cute little zigzag stitch all the way around instead of a straight stitch. And that adds some character. So these are just fun little ornaments that you can make and then put a little button on the top, super quick and easy. And I wanted to show you that I also took this same Christmas tree pattern and we made a fireplace garland or you can hang it anywhere in your home. Um, this was another super quick and easy project. So just make a bunch of trees and you can put them in different places. I think Amy is going to drop in a link to this fire, the, the festive tree garland um, because we actually made that project a year and a half ago when we did a Christmas in July thing with Michaels. And so that was a really fun one. And so she's going to put a link to that uh, YouTube video. So if you want to go back and watch that one, you can. So take some time this holiday season to make those. The other one that I wanted to show you are these little mini um, stockings, which are so, so cute. Um, these are perfect little ornaments, but you know what my mom uses these for? She uses them on her um, dining room table or kitchen, her holiday table, and she puts the silverware down in it and rolls up a little napkin and sticks it in there too. And it just is part of her little table decoration. And then her guests can take this home as an ornament, a little keepsake, a little favor. So I love that she makes these too. Um, so I just made a couple and I, I really wanted to do one that was not traditional uh, holiday fabric. And I thought this was super cute, a little uh, rhinestone here. So um, this project is also going to be available and linked in the chat, and you'll have access to it as well. This is another quick and easy one to do. I also think these would be really cute to put like a gift card in, you know, and then put it in someone's stocking or something. So, all right, so this is the one we're going to make, and I am going to jump right into this tutorial because there, as I mentioned, a lot of steps, but it's actually not hard. You just have to kind of think about it a little differently. So this is the one we're gonna make. And you'll have these instructions um, available to print out. And they have everything you need to um, make this project and lots of great um, photo tutorial uh, photos along with the process so that you can definitely make this and, and have a successful project. So we're gonna do it real quick together. And you can follow along, you can take notes if you like, and yeah, let's do this. All right, so I went ahead, like I said, for time's sake, I went ahead and cut out um, my fabrics, my materials. And this is what it's gonna end up looking like when we're done with the fabrics I have here. So you're gonna need a piece of ribbon. I have an eight inch piece of ribbon. You're gonna need a button for the center. You're going to need a few different pieces of fabric. And I wanted to clarify what is what. So when you make this, what you think the main fabric is, is not the fabric 
that it ends up being on the ornament um, that you would assume it would be. So I'm just going to show you real quick. So this is the main fabric piece, and I'll show you how I folded all of this in a second. But the main fabric piece, what you end up seeing of that piece is just this little curved edge. So even though it's the biggest piece of fabric we're using, all you're going to end up seeing in the finished ornament of that piece is this curved edge right here. Isn't that crazy? Trust the process, okay? <laughs> Trust the process. All right, so then you're going to have two five-inch pieces. By the way, the main piece is 10 inches by 10 inches. So you're going to want to get a nice ruler out, get a rotary cutter, and you're going to want to cut these exactly as the measurements in the tutorial. So this one is 10 inches by 10 inch square, which I folded, so I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. And then you're going to have two other pieces. You're going to have a back piece and you're gonna have a center piece. And both of these are five by five. So the back piece is exactly that. It's what goes on the back, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. The center piece is what you see in the center of these curved parts, okay? So that's that part. And then the accent piece is another square that you're gonna cut just like these, but instead of five inches, they're four and a half by four and a half inches, okay? And you just need one. And we are going to cut that into, um, that piece into uh, triangles. We're gonna split it into smaller triangles. And that is what you're going to see here, okay? So I wanted to visually let you know as you plan out what you want where. <laughs> Um, if you want, when you think of main piece, when you title it main piece, you think it's going to be the focal point and it's not, it's real, well, it kind of is, but it's, this is all you end up seeing. Okay. So I just like to clarify that. Um, so this is our, these are the pieces we're going to use and we're going to just jump right in. So with the main piece, you see, I've kind of already folded it up. There's a lot of folding and pressing in this project, and it, it does need to be pretty precise. So just be sure that you are um, making sure your cuts are exactly like they need to be. So I have my 10 inch by 10 inch piece, and in order to fold it like I had it, you're gonna start by folding it in half and pressing it, and then you're gonna turn it and open it up and fold it in half and press it this way, okay? For time's sake, I'm. we're just gonna, there's good photos in my tutorial of this part, but it's really easy. So you're just gonna press and you're gonna get these little memory creases that go down the center in both directions. You can kind of still see them a little bit here and here. And from there, you're going to fold in your corners and press them into that center where you've had that crisscross, okay? So you have that. And then you're going to turn it and you're going to fold it these corners in. Like I said, it's like origami, but we're just folding in the corners and you just do it twice. Okay. So that's how I ended up here. Um, and when I say press, I mean, you're actually pressing your iron onto it. You're not sliding it around. You want a nice press because you want to make sure that your corners and your edges really line up well. Okay. Any questions so far? I know I just kind of flew through that bit, but it's just ironing or pressing. So um, the next step, and now we're gonna start creating this um, cathedral window ornament. We're gonna take some pens and just pin down. Well, that one's a bit pin. Let's see here. We're gonna pin down the square, these little triangles that we folded in so that they lay flat. And we are going to stitch this center part shut, okay? I'm gonna hold this up close. We're gonna stitch back and forth right here, and then we'll turn our fabric and we'll stitch back and forth right here and do some back stitches. And we just wanna tack this down in the center so it stays in place, okay? So I'm gonna go over to the machine, and just so you all know, I'm gonna back up for just a second so you can see the machine I'm sewing with today. This is our Singer Heavy Duty 6700C. This is a computerized machine. Um, it's probably one of my um, favorite machines is our heavy duty line. Um, so I like to use it a lot and I'm gonna get my little thread out from under there. My tweezers. See my thread's about to come out of my needle so I want to 
pull it out a little bit. There we go. All right. So this is what I'm using today. I know Amy will drop some links to the products that I'm using. So you can see them and check them out for yourself. But this is a computerized machine. And one of my favorite features on our computerized machines are the uh, needle up down. It will come in handy today. Uh, so you'll see that in a minute. You do not need a heavy duty machine to make this. We're not sewing like heavy duty material, but you know, just because it's heavy duty doesn't mean it can't sew other materials as well, like cottons and delicates and things like that. So I'm gonna come right into the center and I'm gonna start just a quarter inch past the corners on each side. And I like to use that needle down button to drop my needle. And I have a back stitch button that I'm going to tap a couple of times. And I'm just going to go back and forth a few times. And then I'm going to lift um, my foot. I'm not going to cut my thread. I'm just going to spin my fabric, lower it back down into the center here, and continue to stitch. back and forth in the center. There we go. And finally snips and we have sewn back and forth right here. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. We are going to cover all of this up at, in the end. So don't worry about it. Just trust the process. That's going to be our theme today is trusting the process. Okay. I'm going to trim my threads real quick. There we go. All right, and we can take these pins out. And you know what? This is what happens when you are in a hurry. I'm going to remove my stitches real quick and tell you that I messed up. <laughs> I forgot to put in our centerpiece. After I explained to you which pieces are which, I forgot to do that. So that was my fault. Bear with me for just a second. Even, even myself, who has made these many times, will make mistakes sometimes, and that's okay. So if you make the same mistake, at least you'll know how to fix it. Just using my little seam ripper here to remove these simple little stitches that we did. And we'll just do them again in a second. I need that uh, centerpiece to show that difference in the fabrics. So my apologies, guys. Give me just a second. OK, so now you know how to do that part, but now we're going to put in our centerpiece. <laughs> so our centerpiece of fabric that I'm using today is this piece. And it needs to go on the inside before I fold this down. Okay. Um, and what we're going to do is there's a couple of tricks here. Um, you can leave it just like this and then fold it in, but you see how it kind of wants to like bunch up a little bit. So you want to make sure that one it's cut to size and sometimes you need to trim it down a little bit. The other trick is to adhere it to this right here. So to put some sort of adhesive. I like to use a basting spray, but since I'm indoors and in a not a well ventilated uh, area, I'm actually just going to use a few dabs of uh, just a glue stick. This will dry clear. You're not really going to see it, but it's just going to prevent it from moving around. Another option would be fabric glue or um, even like seam tape, like um, clear seam tape is an option. But this is just going to keep it from shifting around. And now we can close up our triangles here and pin them back down real quick. Again, my apologies. Sometimes I get ahead of myself because I get so excited. I just want you guys to see how cool these look as they come together. It's really, really fun. And um, I can't wait for you to see them. 
This one's a little long, so I am going to giving it a little trim. Mine was a little long. There we go. And here we go. All right, so we're gonna repeat the same step and we're gonna tack this down uh, in both directions, like I just did, but we're gonna do it together again. Practice makes perfect. I'm going to spin it around. And now we are tacked down. And I'm going to trim my threads. Now we should be good to go. See if I can avoid skipping any more steps today. I think my brain is already starting to slip into holiday mode where I just am ready to re relax and prepare for the new year. So, okay, so this is where we're at right now. And now we're going to take our accent pieces, which I have these cute little gnomes. And this was that four and a half by four and a half square that I cut in diagonals to um, create these little triangles. And if you're using a directional fabric, you're going to want to make sure that you're placing them um, so that they're all facing in the same direction. Let's see here, so just like this, this is where they're all gonna go. Again, you trust the process. And I'm going to use a little handy dandy glue stick again to tack these down. These are really important to get tacked down, especially along the edge and the corners. See if I can try to not get too much glue on myself today. It's inevitable. And you're going to want to line up your triangle, the bottom edge of your triangle with the edge of the, the square. Okay, so you want to have a little bit of a gap um, here. And I'm just going to go around and do all of these. A little bit in the center there. You can use, um, like I said earlier, a basting spray. You can use uh, fabric glue. You can use seam tape. Or you could try to do it without adhering it down. I just feel like it would be really difficult because these are such small pieces. So. There we go. Are we doing okay with uh, questions? And I'm trying to check the chat, but keep keep gluing at the same time. I think we're good, Bethany. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Amy and Sonny are on top of it. So here we go. So now we've got all of our little triangles glued on. What I like about the glue stick is it dries pretty quickly uh, and then my fabric's not getting wet. So here is where we're at and somehow we're going to make it look like this and this is the fun part, the part that I enjoy the most. This is when you're going to take, actually I'm going to bring you guys in a little closer if I can. Um, I'm going to take this edge right here and I'm just going to fold it in. And you see how as I fold it in, it makes this curve from this point to the corner, makes this curve. This is what we're going to sew down right along this edge, 
all the way across to create this. And my tip and my advice when doing this is to do the all the ones going in the same direction and then come back and do all of the other ones curving in the other direction, okay? So what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna explain it here and then we'll go over to the machine and do it together, is we're gonna start in the center right here. We're gonna do a little back stitch when we start and we're gonna sew as close to this curved edge as possible. And we're gonna hold it down as we sew all the way down. And we're gonna sew right off the end. We don't have to back stitch here, which is gonna create bulk and we don't need that. So uh, it's gonna get stitched in later. So we're just gonna sew all the way across here. Now, if you're new to sewing and not comfortable with holding this this close, you can take a pin. That's a really big one. Let's get a smaller one. You can take a pin and stick it in here to kind of hold that curve down. Um, I'll do that for the first one and then the other ones will kind of go through and get all of them done real quick. And we're just going to use a straight stitch like we did to tack down the center. My straight stitch is just a two and a half millimeter stitch length. So it's just a standard kind of typical uh, straight stitch here. And I am, I don't know if you can see this little notch in the center of my foot, but that's kind of where I'm putting this starting point. And Let's see here, I'm gonna drop my needle. Remember, we're gonna do a couple back stitches. And I'm going to follow all the way along. I'm gonna take my pin out. I'm gonna keep holding this down. There we go. All right, so I'll show you this one up close so you can see what it looks like. Not good with these camera angles. Here we go. So you see how I got this curve going all the way down and this just tails right off. Look how cute that is and how easy that was. So now I'm going to come over to my next one. Let's go in and that I'm going to skip this one and come over to this one because it's going to curve in the same direction. I personally like to do all the ones going in the same direction at the same time. And then I switch directions with the next one. It just prevents me from trying to go the wrong way on a curve. Here's the next one. We're just gonna keep going. Now I am using a white thread uh, on this project today so that it shows up on these colors of the fabrics that I've chosen, um, but you can use coordinating thread, which is what I did on this one. See, I used a coordinating thread. So your stitches are blend in a little better and they don't stand out. So if it's not perfect, you won't notice it. On mine, they may not be perfect and you might notice it for the sheer fact that I'm using a thread that stands out today, but I wanted you to be able to see it really well on camera what I'm doing. Okay, right, and we'll do one more going in this direction and then we'll trim our threads and come back and do the other direction. This is probably my favorite part of this project um, because it's just like the wow factor of like making it really all come together. All right, so this is what we have so far. Again, trust the process. We're gonna come back over here real quick and I'm going to just I like to stop after doing them in one direction and just clean it up and trim all these threads so they don't get stuck in, um, in with each other. My threads are sticking to my sticky fingers from the glue, but that's okay. All right. And all of this will get cleaned up. You won't even see any of this on the back. So there you go. 
All right, so this is where we're at so far. And now we're going to go in the other direction and create the curves going the other way. All right. So now I have to mentally tell myself to curve in the other direction. <laughs> Let's see here. Sometimes I have to take that first one a little slow when I'm going a different path. Let's see, we're going to go over to the next one. All right. One more. All right, so this is what we have so far. And again, I'm going to just come in here and clean up my threads. It's starting to look like the finished ornament with the cathedral shapes. This is, probably, like I said, my favorite part is doing these curves and making them kind of come to life. All right, so this is where we're at now, and this is where we're trying to get to. So what we need to do next is we're going to um, attach our ribbon. So now that we have all of this line, we're gonna take our eight inch piece of ribbon, and we're going to kind of loop it together like this. And then you're going to want to put it in one of the top corners if you have directional fabric. I'm going to put it here. I'm just going to pin it in place. I'm going to pin it in place, not with my finger, because I had my finger on the back side and kind of grabbed that. That was that did not feel good. All right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go back to the machine and we're just gonna tack this down right here in this corner, this, this ribbon, just so it makes it easier and we're sure to catch it when we sew uh, around the whole thing. So I'm gonna go back over to the machine again with the straight stitch, it's the only stitch we're gonna use for this project. And I'm gonna start as close to the edge as I can. Thread's not under my foot. There we go. We're gonna tack it down and go back and forth a couple of times, just like that. So now we have this tacked down and we're ready to put the back on, which the back is actually gonna go onto the front until we're ready to turn it right side out. It's really coming together quickly. Once you get past like the folding and getting all of the pieces kind of on the front and the curves, it's, it comes together very quickly. So now we're gonna take our back piece, which I'm using this piece right here. It's another five by five, five inch by five inch. And we wanna make sure that this ribbon, it stays on the inside. You don't wanna get it caught into our seam here, sorry. 
You don't want to get it caught into the seam. So we want to make sure it stays folded in. And we're going to put this right sides together. So we want the back and the front to be right sides together. And we're going to clip this down. I like to use clips. You can use pins. But since we're getting a little bulky here, I like to um, I like to use clips personally. And I clip it in the centers and on the corners just to keep it nice and flat. Let's see here. All right. Now I have clipped it all the way around except for right here because I'm going to take my little mini ruler here and we want to sew around this whole square, but we want to leave an opening so we can turn it right side out. So I'm going to do a two to even two and a half inch. I kind of like to do a two. It is a little challenging to um, turn, but it's not impossible because I've done it. And then it's less to sew up uh, when you close it. So we're just going to mark. I like to use a little fabric pen and mark my two inch opening so I don't accidentally sew it shut. Um, <laughs> so we're going to start here so all the way around the edge and stop here leaving an opening we're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance um, all the way around in a straight stitch all right so if you're not sure what a quarter inch is most machines and this one included will have markings of, of the measurements here the quarter inch though is actually on i'm going to take this off so you can see this it's on the top of the little cover right here, the bobbin cover. So it says quarter inch right here and it's in red. Um, so that's where we're gonna line up the edge of our fabric. And that means it's a quarter inch from where the, if the needle is in the center position. Okay, so needle in the center position, this is a quarter inch from that needle. Um, so that's what we're gonna start. Now, if you um, can't really see this or if this is kind of hard to see, you can always take a piece of like, painter's tape or something and put it right here along this red edge so you can see it better. Um, that's another little trick that I've done before. So we're not lining our fabric up with the edge of the foot. We're lining it up with this quarter inch mark on our um, machine. And I'm going to start at my little pin mark here. And we are going to backstitch at the at the beginning and end of our stitch going around so that our uh, seam uh, stays in our, our stitches stay in place while we turn it. Now, when you get to a corner, you want to leave the needle in the down position, lift your foot, and pivot your material. And before you start stitching again, you want to make sure as you pivot around that this edge of the fabric lines up with your quarter inch mark. If it doesn't, you, you've gone too far, you can go back, do a little back stitch, and then um, reposition. So see, for me, this one's a, a stitch too far. So I'm going to pivot back and I'm going to backstitch once and now it's perfect. I'm going to work our way all the way around here. And I just backstitched because I got back to my ending mark. 
And there's our stitches all the way around our square with leaving an opening here. Okay. So I'm going to trim these threads and we're going to turn this right side out. It is, like I said, a little challenging because there's a lot in here, but you just have to be patient. Don't pull too hard on this opening, but we did our little back stitches so it should hold up just fine. And I like to find my ribbon. It's usually on one side or the other here. Here it is. And kind of find that and start with that. So I start turning that corner out first. Like I said, it just takes a minute. This is a good job for kids because they have like little fingers. There we go. <laughs> So if the kids want to help, this is a good task for them. And then when we stuff it with all the stuffing, that's another fun task that they, the part that they like to do. All right. So I have it kind of gently pushed out, but now I'm going to use this little corner tool to safely push my corners out so that they're um, nice and sharp points, or as sharp as they will be. There we go. And I like to run this edge along my seams. It just kind of helps uh, keep those seams nice and crisp and make sure everything's turned out so we have a nice square when we're done. Don't be afraid to kind of really get in there and get these corners turned and pushed out nicely. There we go. One more where the ribbon is. It should come out the corner. There we go. This is what we have so far. It's really coming together. It's super cute. Okay, so I am going to trim these little threads real quick. What we're gonna do next is go over to the iron and we're gonna press this opening. We're gonna kind of turn the fabric in and press it and give it like a memory crease. And um, we're not gonna sew it shut just yet. We still need to stuff it. Um, but having this little memory crease before you stuff it makes it easier to sew it shut, okay? So let me switch over here. I have to move my camera, so just give me a second. And I'm just gonna move the camera for you guys. This is just easier. So I'm going to press this really well. And when I was talking about pressing earlier, I didn't show you all the steps of the folding and everything, but you wanna make sure that you're pressing, not ironing, okay? Um, and I'm gonna be using our Singer Steamcraft Plus iron. I do have the steam on. It does kind of help set set these seams and um, get them nice and crisp. Turn it over, make sure my little corner or my edges are folded in. So I'm getting that good memory crease. There we go. So now I have a little crease here. So when I go to sew this shut, it'll be easier. It's okay if these are still a little wrinkled, Sorry, um, here and here, because we're going to stuff it. And when we stuff it, it'll fill it out. So let's shift back over here. All right. So this is the fun part. Um, I'll just kind of come up here. You haven't seen me in a minute. Um, I have this big bag of polyfill, which is just the stuffing that goes inside pillows and whatever you want to. Um, stuff, but you're going to need quite a bit. You'll be surprised at how much gets stuffed into um, one of these uh, little ornaments. So you're going to just take a little of time. And like I said, this is a great task or step for the kids to help with because it's um, good for the little fingers. 
And you're going to want to make sure that you get it all the way down into these corners really well so that they hold their shape. There we go. And you don't want to overstuff it, but I I do like mine to like really have a nice curve to it. Now, um, an idea that I saw and I thought it was super cute is, you know, we're making these as ornaments, right? But there are people who will not do the pucker with the button. They'll not um, uh, tack it down. So it has this like little pucker here and they'll... Um, They'll not do that part. They'll just use keep it nice and round like this, and they'll use it as a pin cushion, which I think is super cute. And what they'll do is they'll attach their button before they put the back on, and and that way it's already on, so they don't have to tack it in. But for the ornament, I really like it kind of tacked in and having this little pillowy look. So we're gonna do the button last. So you don't have to do the button button last if you don't want it to be um, tacked in like that. Okay. So I've got quite a bit in here. I think I'm good. I'm gonna kind of check my corners here. Yeah, that feels good. All right, so I kind of leave a little bit of an opening in the center here um, so that I can uh, push my button down in here. So you're just gonna want to find a button. This is just a random button I had in my random button bag um, that I have. And you're just going to want to uh, tack this down and make sure that your button covers up this right here. Now for closing this, that memory crease comes in handy. I like to flip it closed and you can just hand sew this shut with just a needle and thread so that you don't see any of it and it looks fine. You can top stitch it, but you're going to see it. So I personally on this one that I did, I can't even tell. I think it was right here where I hand sewed it shut. I can tell because there's a little pucker right there and right there, but you don't see the stitches. So it looks nice and finished, right? I, it took me a minute to find that. So when you're done, you're going to stuffing it, you're going to hand sew this shut, and then you're going to attach the button. And so I'm not gonna hand sew this because it takes a minute, but I am going to show you a little trick for the button. If I can get my needle and thread. So I just have a needle and thread here. I did not off the end. And to hide that little end tail, I'm going to bring my needle through the center here and catch that and then slide my button through my needle onto here and position it. And I wanna make sure that as I'm doing this, I'm pushing down and not using the, the thread to, to pucker this, because if I do, it will, my thread could, could break and, and then I'd have to start all over. So I'm going to kind of go straight down and keep this pinched shut or pinched, I'm sorry, not shut, but pinched with my fingers. So I'm holding my button where I want it and I'm pulling this taut. So you have a little spot in the center of the back where you'll have um, the um, thread for sewing on the button. But if you use a matching thread with the fabric on the back, you won't even see it. And it'll look just like that on the front. And you're just gonna go back and forth and go through the different holes on your buttons. You can have a four hole button, you could have a two hole button. I like the four hole, I feel like it tacks it down really well. But you see, as I, as I pull this through, it's giving, oh, sorry. As I pull this through, it's giving that nice tucker, puckered look. I'm tuckered out of puckers. <laughs> I'm, puck I'm doing all of these. So let's see here. Let's try to do a few more. You want to try to get through that same spot over and over on the back. There we go. Okay. 
And let's see here. Sometimes it takes a minute to find the hole for the button. Well, there we go. And you're just going to keep going back and forth until you've gone through all of the holes on your button and you've got it kind of tuckered in or puckered in as far as you want. I don't know why I keep saying tuckered. I mean puckered. Tufted. Maybe that's the word I'm thinking of and I'm getting them combined. Tufted. That sounds like something I would do. A little word mash. Tufted, like a tufted pillow or couch. There we go. Do we have any questions? It is cute. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you for saying that. Yes, yeah, so you can make this, Kathy made a good point. She said, if you don't stuff it, you could make this as a little table runner. So this is pretty small. You could actually not stuff it, put the little button on there and make it like a little coaster or something. But if you wanted to cut the pieces bigger, you could make it as a placemat or piece piece multiples, multiples of these together to make like a table runner and stuff. So great idea, Kathy and Sharon with the coaster. Loving the material. Oh, thank you. So these fabrics came in a little pre-cut kit, um, pre-cut Singer fabrics um, from Michaels. They come in a little stack, they're little fat quarters. And so they come matching, which is really nice. So I didn't really have to think about which fabrics would go well together. I just cut out my little gnome fabrics and, and everything else. And it, I think it turned out really cute. So all I have to do now is go back through and hand sew this, but that's super quick and easy. Um, so, you know, this is probably one of my favorite ornaments I've ever made. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. They do really pop, don't they? I think they are so much fun. They they have a wow factor. Like you gift this to someone and they're like, oh, this looks like it took you forever and it was really hard. And it's really not just following the steps. So I hope you enjoy these and try to make some. If you do, please tag Singer Sewing or use the hashtag Singer Sewing and use the hashtag Make It With Michaels when you um, make yours so we can see the fabrics that you chose. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Thank you for tuning into all of our classes this year. I've had so much fun doing these with you all and with Michaels um, and we will be back in the new year. So we'll see you in January and I'm, I'll talk to you soon. Happy holidays and happy new year.